Welcome back to Switch to Linux. We are going to have a little distro quick look today. We are going to do a quick look at Solid K. Now, Solid K is a distro that comes, I believe, out of Norway. I should have looked that up. <laughs> uh, but anyway, Solid K is a distro that comes out, uh, I believe it comes out of Norway. What it was originally designed is it was a distro for, uh, it was based on Linux Mint. Of course, Linux Mint has the main Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu, and then they had an, a Debian version of Linux Mint. I'm pretty sure they still do. I've not actually used it. I should probably think about that. Um, and uh, with Solid K, there's Solid K and there is Solid X, and that is why if you have a look at their website, you will see that they have their their logo has the X and the K. The reason they have this is that. There are two versions of this. There's an XFCE and there's a KDE, and this is based on the latest Debian. Uh, so it's basically, you have Debian, and then, um, of course, they, they do a couple of small tweaks, customizations, style it a little bit different, give it their own theme, and then uh, they they deliver that. So that's what, what this one is. If you want to run, uh, if you do want to run Debian, but you don't want to go through the the pain of setting it up, you might think of running Solid K or Solid X, depending if you like KDE or XFCE. And for me, um, I like, uh, I run XFCE on some things. One of my writing computers is, uh, runs Peppermint, which is XFCE, and of course I run Cubes, which is XFCE. I'm not a huge fan of XFCE outside of that. Um, I do like KDE, which I'm running on this computer here, is uh, um, is actually Debian 9. Just installed it from a net installer, and actually that distro there, that computer there, runs uh, KDE, Cinnamon, or Mate, and I also have Kodi on there as well. Uh, so I've actually kind of blinged out that computer. I spent a, a few days getting everything working about the way I like. The volume is still not completely working yet, and that's to me is a, a little bit of a challenge, is that I do not have the volume working quite yet. Um, it works for most of the applications I use it for, it works. Uh, Kodi still does not work, Conqueror still does not work, right? Um, but that's kind of the challenges I'm working with. So of course, Debian is not really designed for a um, is not really designed for for a, a, a beginner or or a Linux newbie to try and work through. It's it's a little bit more complicated, but for the little bit more complicated, you do get a little bit more security out of it. And so that's one of the reasons you might run it. Now this one here, Solid K, they have a lot of the fixes already done. I've not tested if the volume is fixed here, but I have looked at a lot of other places. So you decide whether you want the XFCE or the KDE version, and then you can download either the direct download or you can get a, a torrent, and there's some different mirrors of a few other places. You can learn more about the project, where it came from, and uh, things like that on their main website. So that is just a real brief overview. Let's go ahead and uh, have a look at the distro itself. Okay, so we've booted this up. Um, it gives us this welcome screen. Um, so I had started this a moment ago and I didn't realize I had reset the computer, but this is one of those distros that does not kick the, the live CD out of the virtual box. And so um, uh, it rebooted with the virtual drive again. So here's a nice, Welcome screen, so it talks about the software a little bit. Uh, talks about the support, let's see. So this is based on repositories, okay, there's some basics. Here's a little bit of support. Let's just walk through what's over here. I have no idea. I said this is, uh, I, I looked at it, played with it for just a little bit on the uh, on the live uh, live disk and then I installed it here. So, so multimedia codecs are not included by default for legal or security reasons. HTML5 is the default player in Firefox. YouTube and other sites are already using HTML5. There are still some sites using Flash. Beware, Flash is not open source. Some Flash content may hurt your system. There's CSS. Okay, content scrambler system attempts to restrict the software that can play the DVD. Does not come with the necessary packages pre-installed to play these encrypted DVDs. By clicking the install button below, you can install the following packages. Okay, so if you do happen to want to play a DVD on your system, you can go ahead and install this. 
If you do not want to, then you do not want to install this. So that is something you can do. So this is a nice addition. Um, you know, I've never actually tested if, uh, if my Debian build over here can do it. I don't think I installed those extra codecs. I'm just not sure. I have no idea. I'll have to try that sometime. Uh, we're going to go ahead and not install those. We'll go ahead and see what the next screen is. So here's some business applications. GNU Cash is, um, uh, this is a uh, accounting software, kind of like an open source version of QuickBooks. I still use QuickBooks for my businesses. I'm still, I'm learning GNU Cash, but um, I have all my business stuff working on QuickBooks. I cannot seem to grab that scroll bar over there. That's kind of driving me mad. Okay, well, all right, well, I got it. I guess I got it. Dola bar. CRM, easy to use business contacts. Okay, let's use my up and down arrows. Huh, never used, never used Dola bar. That might be interesting. I might have to, I'm going to write that down. This is one of the reasons I love doing distro, distro reviews and distro quick looks is because I learned about all sorts of software I've never heard of before. <laughs> I'm going to write that down. Uh, that's a Linux CRM. I might want to use something like that. That sounds like it would be fun. I have a lot of business clients I manage right now. All right. Leto DMS is an open source web-based document management system written in PHP. Web-based document man. Okay. All right. Interesting. Not really interested in that, but Project Libre is a project management software system intended to be a complete desktop replacement for Microsoft Project. I'm going to go ahead and click the install button. I want to see if we have the option to install these individually or as a group. Let's see what we got. Um... I'm going to say, if that's not the password, I don't know what it is. <laughs> so it looks like it might be installing all of those. I would kind of like to install one or two of those. Like, I'm the, the second one, Dolabar, looks very fascinating to me. The first one, hmm, I'd install it. Why not? Uh, the last two don't seem interesting to me. I don't know. Maybe they are if they're on there. I don't know. But let's give it a second see what it does. One of the things that I'm noticing on this while this is installing, one of the things I'm noticing is there is a pretty significant delay when I hit my uh, when I hit my uh, my button there to open up the menu. There is like a three second delay before the menu opens, and I hope that's not something that's uh, that is a standard thing because it's very uh, it does seem slow and sluggish to me. And I know you know most distros on this virtual box do not seem slow. Um, you know, I have this VirtualBox decked out with four cores and eight gigs of RAM, so it's not like VirtualBox is run slow in this system. Um, let's see, what's my CPU at? 27% CPU running from OBS right now. Um, it's still installing, so this is taking a little bit. I guess while that's installing, we'll look at a few other things. Let's just have a look at the applications. The icon packs on here, although I'm, I'm not a huge fan of this flat modern uh, UI that has been uh, hoisted upon us, I have to say that this is a very nice take on the flat modern UI. It's not totally bland. Um, I do like the icons. They're certainly not... Uh, Certainly not uh, not what I would want to run my whole main production system on. If you remember my Debian build over here, my icons over here are like 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 bling, man. Um, and that's why the way I like them. All right, so graphics, one view for uh, images. We have Firefox, X11 VNC server. We have um, uh, Thunderbird. We have VLC is the multimedia player. So Office, so it looks like it's installing some of our things. We have Ocular, we have LibreOffice, the full LibreOffice suite. Under our settings, we have a firewall configurations. We have some uh, solid XK system settings. We'll have a look at that when this is done installing. Here's our main welcome screen. Here's our main system settings, which I assume is the same one over here. Um, under system, let's see, we have a uh, Deb package manager, uh, basic system utilities. So I like this in that it doesn't have an excess amount of software, but it does seem to have a lot of your basic computer tools. 
And so that's very nice. So we do have a nice modern UI, modern logos or like modern icon pack, except it's not too flat and too modern. So this is an attractive one. I do like what I see here. Um, let's see what the alternatives we have available to us. Okay, so we do have, still have the dashboard, the app, application launcher, and the application menu, which is the one we are on right now. Um, let's see. These are all pinned to the taskbar rather than being uh, the way I like them, and I can't see exactly what they are. Okay, so that one's that one's a toggle the desktop. This is taking forever to install this thing. This is actually really annoying. I would really have liked it to say, okay, stop. Let me select which one of these four packages was interesting. This is actually driving me crazy. Um, it, if I went into the terminal to install all of these, it would not have taken me that long. All right, well, we're done now. Okay, so home applications. We have GIMP, we have Inkscape, um, we have Shotwell. Clementine. See, again, like Handbrake, again, I would really like at this screen here, um, if the developers happen to watch this, I would really like this screen if I could choose which of these I can install. Or if I can, it's not obvious to me. Um, but, like, having started this up the way I would use a computer, I might install GIMP, maybe Inkscape. Um, I absolutely hate Shotwell. Shotwell pisses me off. Um, every time I plug in the iPhone, hey, you want to download your images? No, I'm perfectly capable of opening the thing up and migrating my images. So I will not install Shotwell on a computer if it is already not already there. Uh, Clementine, I would probably install that. While I like VLC, I do prefer Clementine. Um, uh, I do prefer Clementine over VLC for um, me media management. I like VLC when I want to interact with. Um, you know, with my uh, with my media server, Handbrake. I wouldn't have a need to install that over here. Sound Converter, not really. Uh, Kden Live. I'd like to install that probably. And uh, Transmission and Torrent. Mm, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Um, so I don't want to hit the install button again because. There's some of these applications I would like to install. Most of them I do not. And I'm going to give that a criticism of the system in that I really, I, I want to be able to select which applications. I, just, I don't want to get to the screen and go, oh, home applications, push install and install a bunch of bloatware for me. Um, so I'll just install whatever I want. Here's some extra system applications. Um, I'd like FileZilla of this. Eh, maybe Gparted. of. Let's see, is there a disks on here? I don't know, I might do Gparted. VirtualBox? Eh, no, because this isn't a VirtualBox. I don't really need VirtualBox inside of VirtualBox. This is not Inception, thank you. So I'm just going to skip that. And then, of course, Games. We have MindTest. Um, Steam. Is that zero? Zero AD. Okay, I was going to say, how do you pronounce that? Good, they included a pronunciation. I like it. Battle for Wednesday. Ooh, I like that Battle for Wednesday. Looks good. I'm going to write that one down. I'm going to... Um, it's the only type of game I'd play is a game that might look like that. I'll have to play. Look at that. Neverball looks like Marble Madness. I definitely don't want that. There's Super Tux Cart. I'll go ahead and skip all those. And then, of course, play on Linux. Um, this, okay, wow, wow, wow. See that red text? Hopefully you're not colorblind. You can see it. I like this implementation because I am very critical of operating systems jumping down, installing Wine, installing Play on Linux by default, and then advertising you can run your Windows applications. All that does, if you do not intend to use it, is it makes it vulnerable to Windows viruses. So, recap. Yes, we're going to go to Linux. It's more secure. And then we're going to put Wine on it so we can get all the same viruses. <laughs> now, if you have Wine on your system, you are opening yourself up to potentially having viruses. Now, I think Play on Linux sandboxes it a little bit more. If my if I understand 
play on Linux uh, well enough. I believe that's what it does. But I love this implementation right here. Okay, here it is. It is an availability. This will allow you, let's see what it says exactly. Um, let's see, going to be installed, okay. It comes with a wide variety of software. However, if you cannot find the right software in our repository, you need to use MS Windows software. You can install it using Play on Linux. Not all software can run this way, but a large amount of software is already supported. Again, I love that because I don't, I, they're not giving that blanket statement, hey, switch to Linux, and then you can run all your Windows programs over here because it's a reality you can't do that. And so I really, really, really love this screen. Huge, huge, huge thumbs up for this one. And then it gives you that red warning. This is that warning nobody else wants to talk about. And I love the fact that it's here. By using this software, you may open yourself up to MS Windows viruses and malware. Risk of infection is not higher than under native MS Windows. Make sure you install software only from trusted parties. That is an excellent statement because now I have the option to install it it's an availability, but it's not something that I absolutely have to do. I love this screen. Wow, they get some kudos from me. All right, that's the last screen. I'm not going to install Play on Linux. Um, I love their implementation. Wow, 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 lots of good stuff from that. All right, so we've looked at the icons. Um, some other things I wanted to look at, um, opening up your folders. Um, now, some of the things that, that are, um, uh, Let's see, can I right click and create something new over here? Yes, I can, let me close this first. It does seem a little sluggish. Um, okay, we'll go ahead and create a new folder. Now, one of the things about it is if you are used to most KDE uh, builds, it uses a different way of interacting with the icons and that it is a single click to open it instead of a double click. Most people are not used to that. And so I really like that this one here, it's another one of the distros where they actually took the uh, the folder systems and they actually made it, uh, they, they fixed it so that it is still double click so it will more closely match what you might be used to. So you can change and toggle that in the settings, but you do have to double click the folder to get uh, to get to it. Um, and so that is that is very good. I like the fact that they did that because again, I, I, I'm gonna say if somebody really wants to run Debian, but you're not an advanced Linux user or don't want to deal with setting things up, this is probably going to be your logical choice assuming you will either want to run um, um, uh, KDE or XFCE. Uh, the other thing I want to check is how does it interact with the network? Um, most of my Debian build, or um, excuse, excuse me, most of my KDE builds have not interacted with my network out of, out of the box. I have actually had to install other software packages to allow them to do that. This one, it is taking a long time, but it should be able to access it. Um, I, I did my tests. There it goes. Right. Kitty wants to say hi. Hello, everybody. Use Solid DK. It rocks. All right, Kitty agrees. Use this distro. This thing's a sweet distro. I'm liking it. I'm giving this guy, uh, giving this guy some some good marks. All right, so here, um, here it is actually interacting with uh, with my system, uh, with my network. So that's good. We don't have to mess with that at all. Um, let's see. Move that to trash. Yeah, move to trash. Hey, and it doesn't give me that the very annoying. Do you sure you want to do this notification? Uh, so that's actually good. Let's see, volume, how's the volume work? Well, it doesn't work by my volume keys, that's for sure. Um, okay, let's see, and actually we already said it does not have Conqueror on it, does it? No, it does not have Conqueror on it. Let's look at, um, let's look at the memory usage. Um, here's your system load, so you can see it's really, uh, memory usage is, is not very high right now half a gig, um, 500 megabytes in other words. So that's actually pretty good. So we're doing uh, doing good there, just resting. And then the next thing I want to have a look at is software packages. What, kitty? No, you can't go up there. What? What are you trying to do? What are you trying to do? Okay. All right, so here, um, if we come down into settings, we can see what our software repositories are. So you can see we do not have a whole lot of crazy, uh, crazy repositories. We have our uh, our stretch our stretch security repository, our um, our stretch uh, main uh, sources repository, 
Uh, so it looks like it has the non-free. So we have the free, we have the non-free, and then we have the um, uh, the solid KX upstream. So not a lot as far as repositories. So that's actually good. Nothing too surprising there. But then you can come over here and you can look for applications. Let's see what games we have here. Okay. So you can see there's, um, you know, there's uh, enough software in here uh, to make it worth your while, but there's not a lot of uh, excess packages in here. I wonder if OBS is in here or not. Usually it's not. Oh, it is. Huh, all right. So OBS is actually in here. That's good to know. Good to know. So that's cool. All right. So uh, let's see. We've looked at our icons. Eh, let's see what other things uh, they give us on our desktop, if I want to configure my desktop. So it looks like we have, we do not have an excess amount of, um, of wallpapers. We just have our basics. I think that's one of our defaults. And then we have the, the one we started with, and then we have a darker version of it. So um, they do actually give us the customized uh, there. Let's see, there's locations, mouse actions, tweaks. Okay, so here's your folder view if you are want to change those around. All right, so there's that. Let's go ahead and, oh, you know what, last thing. Let's go ahead and, I don't know if it's the last for sure, but let's go ahead and look at these system settings. See if this is different than the other ones. All right, let's see. So we can encrypt partitions, change our localization, adjust our repositories, or we can hold back packages, and we can do some cleanup. Okay, so that's actually very useful functions that you might otherwise need to do in a terminal. I like that, that's good. More user friendliness. This is, I'm gonna do Deb uh, Solid KX as, uh, as, as user friendly Debian, because <laughs> I love Debian, it's just not the most user friendly Linux distro. And that's not a criticism of it, it's just it has different, different intentions. So here actually I have more items in here than I usually do. So here we have our um, settings manu manager for that. Let's see what themes they give us. Okay, so we have our, okay, we have a dark version of the theme. We have a light version of the theme. Okay, so that's actually pretty cool. So if you do like the dark versions, you can do that. Let's see what the, what the um, Firefox looks like. See what Firefox looks like with the dark theme. Sometimes the dark themes mess up the color boxes. See what I mean? It's a little slow. Okay, good. So we have the dark theme, but we can still see everything inside the boxes. That's good. So their their dark theme looks pretty good. Then we have our breeze light, our breeze dark, solid K light, solid K dark. So that's good. Um, we do have our oxygen theme, which I like. We have solid K light, solid K dark, and then the basic ones that usually come on KDE. We are using, it looks like we are using our, our same basic KDE themes. I might switch to this one if I want to run the dark theme. And actually, let's go ahead and change the, our desktop to the darker theme desktop as well. There you go. So now we have a, a full running darker theme of this. So this is what your dark theme would look like out of the box. Ooh, I like that white peach though. Look at that. That's pretty cool. I like the white peach, but this one's better for a dark theme, I think. All right. And then here we have some splash screen availability, so that's actually pretty nice. All right, let's see what uh, icons we have. So okay, so we're using these. We have a couple different icon packs, um, basic oxygen. Okay. Oh, I wanted to let me go back. Let me discard changes. All right, desktop behaviors. Nothing else is is sticking out as uh, as really out of out of the uh, out of the ordinary. So okay, well, 
there we are. We have a lot of software. I love their implementation of the, the play on Linux. I love the warnings that they have and, and the fact that they're not just blanket statement. You can run your Windows programs over here. The one thing I really wish is that on that one welcome screen, I could choose which software packages I'd like to install. I feel like I'm stuck with either all of the business applications or none of them and all of the personal or all of the, you know, the, the office applications or none of them. And I'd really like the option to be able to choose them. Uh, but regardless, um, this is, uh, this is a, a system that's put together really nice. Let's go ahead and change. I want to change to one of the alternatives. Just want to see what, uh, what this is going to look like when we do this. Okay. So it still looks about the same and let's also check our dashboard. For those that might like a dashboard. Okay. So here we are. Um, All right, so out of the box, the thing seems to work very well. Um, it does give you all of the warnings for the codex, so you have the option to install the codex or not. Uh, you have the options of different types of applications or not. I'd really like to see a more of a customized option. And one thing I didn't actually see, and actually, I mean, I like their choice. They, they give us for internet, they give us uh, Firefox. I kind of like sometimes the distros that are giving you the better choice. Um, but at the same token, it's, um, it's not exactly like, you know, I don't really encourage people to use much other than Firefox anyway. Um, maybe Chromium, but, uh, that's kind of my, my take on that. All right, let's, uh, what terminals on this? Console. Okay. All right. All right. Well, there is that. That's uh, solid K. That was a uh, you know a, a pretty nice uh, pretty nice look at the distro. Very good job on that. So if you are interested in running uh, Debian uh, and you want to run something that you probably don't have to work with uh, the terminal quite as much, you might really look at Solid K. Um, again, if if you're wanting to run Debian and you want to run either uh, KDE or XFCE, obviously I didn't look at XFCE in this particular video. Um, but, uh, you know, the KDE version is really nice. And the reason I went with the KDE is, you know, first, I like, uh, I like KDE a lot better than I like XFCE. Secondly, I, that's why I've been running right here. This is Debian 9 KDE. We were just looking at Debian 9 KDE, slightly customized. So, you know, that's kind of the, the take on that. All right. So, uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Um, if you do like what we are uh, what we are doing here, then you can check us out switch to linux.com forward slash support to learn about the ways you can support us. Uh, briefly right now, as of this video, you have Patreon you can support us on, and there are also Amazon links down below that you can use those. Order something on Amazon, and a small portion of the sale goes back to Switch to Linux to help us fund the videos. So thanks for watching, everybody, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.